Merchant Man, probably need to use him for picking up stuff from the southern colonies more effectively. There's already some gems and stuff there that I want to pick up, and I'd like to get started on that ASAP. He has a lot of gems to be picked up, so let's go that direction right away. And always be careful not to end your move in a storm. Friggin' Brecken's in front of me. Getting in my way. We're actually getting so many treasures rolling in that maybe we should get a second galleon. That would cost us 11,800 gold or so, I think. Oh, 9,120 gold, right, because everything is cheaper for George Washington. Oh, I might do that after all then. Because we have 18,000 gold sitting around ready to go, and we have a gold train after that. I do kind of think a second guy would be a little too much. Now that fellow trader we need to educate, he's useless without education. He's a bad work, eth work ethic. He makes like everything worse except for hammers and education. So it turns out there's actually a whole bit of land that stretches north and then it goes east like this. That is an interesting development. That means that we can probably get across here, making a canal city. So we could build right here. And then we could actually build a canal improvement right there. And then we can go across using very small ships. Like, I'm not sure even a caravel could fit through a canal. Mm, I think it can. I think it can, actually. Let's see, let's check the merchant man. No, merchant man don't list canal. What's up, what about galleon? Galleon don't list canal either, so I think canals are just like, uh, coastal ships mainly. Which are really small ships that can't enter the ocean. Alright, merchant man, pick up the gems. There's no sense picking up the peat or any of the other stuff. Except maybe, no, clay, clay will deal with later on. And then we'll pick up that other garbage from the uh, Pearl Harbor, and then head on to Europe. Make that money. Ah, oh, we found the Russians. Hello there. Yermak Timofeyevich. These guys are disciplined, pioneer, and imperialist. The Russians are all about what? So pretty much all their basic military, artillery, Scout, Pioneer, Native, Trader, Settler, that is cheaper, 20% cheaper in terms of equipment. They have more storage capacity. Their Pioneer is even cheaper with this Pioneer trait down here, and they work 50% faster, and they're cheaper to use. Very nice. And their improvements upgrade faster. That's pretty cool. So improvements can upgrade like farm to large farm, mine to large mine, over time as they're used. And their colonists learn specialization faster through hard work. And they have more defense double production speed of the defensive buildings and less culture needed for territory expansion. So they're like, they're an all around good uh, civilization. They're not focused on anything particular unless, let's see what their unique unit is. Their unique unit is the Siberian Lumberjack. So they make more production of different types of lumber. That's okay. <laughs> I wouldn't say that that's the great, greatest unique unit in the game. Alright, let's pick up some grapes. Let's pick up some gems. And then I do believe that we'll be heading out to Europe immediately. We do need to move some food from Pearly Gates down to Pearl Harbor for equipping settlers pretty soon though. Checking our relations with the Carib real quick. We're at minus two overall, so they're getting increasingly pissed off with us. That is not a surprise. And the French are setting up quite a few missions, which is smart. That is part of what they do. Ah, this must be the Danes as well up here. So our little island is kind of in the middle of like this big, big, I wouldn't call it a gulf, I'd call it a sea, probably. All right, we have so much money to put onto the boat. Let's drop off our goods. And then we shall pick up the treasures and head on out. How are we doing in terms of storage? Not great. Not great at all. We got the chapel down in Pearl Harbor. Firebrand Preacher. I do want you to swap over. But we don't need that many more immigrants, you know what I mean? <laughs> but more is not a bad thing. Let's go ahead, let's do it. And then we'll start working on the village hall. We have enough lumber on hand that I can probably just have the lumberjack do the work for now. And then that'll be good for them. Actually, this disillusioned missionary might get a better bonus. Versus the... Nah, exact same. Gotcha. 
we really need to spread out and colonize even more. The French have done a really good job setting up their missions. They have one in Kigatite, they have one in Ipuitak, one up here in Arabagan. None in the north as far as I can tell, and I did see some native traders moving around over here. I'm not sure if they were failed native traders or the real deal, but they're doing a good job developing their relationships. And this is indeed the Danes here that we have met. Those are the Iroquois, but I met the Danes just a moment ago. They're not doing too great. Great. They tend not to do too great in my experience. Ah, uh -huh. the criminals have decided to rebel. So let us send forth the slave hunter, and they will take care of them. Please do get back to work, Mr. Pioneer. I need that ranch done ASAP. Freedom to pray. Not only is God respected, but also the freedom of the word. Here men who had to remain silent in their old homeland can preach freely. There the stubborn sovereign actively oppressed their faithful. Back in the old country where it gets around, more and more people would jostle in the harbor quays looking for a place on the emigrant ship. There's probably not a unbroken water passage to the Pacific Ocean, otherwise the AI would have probably discovered it by now. Usually they do at this point in the game, in my experience. They're pretty good about finding it if they can find it. Hey hey hey, leaders lead from the front. A general is important for the right strategy and leadership of the army. He's the commander of the whole bunch. But who takes care of everything and executes the orders? Who takes care of the company, the men, the ammunition, and the rations? Who leads the way with the saber? Who honors his men after victory and who straightens the men after defeat? The lieutenant. Looks like we got a lieutenant now. So the brave lieutenant is kind of like a great general but weaker. And we can attach him to somebody. I think what I would like to do is probably like to attach him to... Uh, the native mercenary most likely and we found a proper native trader as well very cool where shall we set them up probably maybe Dainzu Dainzu has three population the further that we set up the longer it's going to take treasures to roll in over time this is very true this is the Maya do the Maya have anything about trading posts nothing specific about trading posts but that's okay Let's go ahead, let's go set up down here. We have 4,793 gold on hand. We have a bunch of ships rolling in slowly to pick people up. But immigration threshold has been increased by 10% due to too many migrants waiting on dock. So we do kind of need more ships, honestly. Yeah, we need more ships to move supplies around. So let's think about, I'd like my next purchase to be probably another Carrick. Ideally, I'd like something with 5 movement. A Brigantine is cheaper, actually, and it holds 4 cargo still. Cool, we'll go for Brigantine then, as soon as I can get the money. Alright, so because we fought that battle, we got Gunsmoke. A gust of wind approaches as, unexpe as unexpected as if someone in heaven had heaved aside. The Gunsmoke vanishes. You now have a clear view of the enemy's misfortune, which is your own good fortune. The first battle is won. You take off your broad-brimmed hat and bow your head in gratitude. Our Father, you say. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Alright, let's apply this brave lieutenant to the native mercenary and make him very powerful. So what shall we give him? I kind of want to give him... Looks like he can't actually take subtle attack immediately. Let's just give him veteran 1 and then we'll be able to... Can't give him subtle attack, can we? Let's make him even more powerful in the forest with ranger. Why not? That's going to be very useful for taking down natives later on. Probably should have gone for double ranger, but whatever. We'll be fine. Most likely. Alright, we've got the docks finished in Pearling Gates, so food income is up significantly. Question is now, what do we want to build? We should actually get that wagon train rolling over time. We're going to need that kit getting built at some point in time, and we've got the resources here. So let's just get it over with. So an inf a influential trading company wants to expand its business in the new world and offers a reward to the first colony to build five cities with harbors. Well, we'll see. It's one of those things, like the AI's already got five cities in a lot of cases. Let's take the soldier. Let's take the you know, fisherman, carpenter, soldier. We're going to found some new colonies. We have money as well for another ship. Let's grab another ship. Quick. So I need to be able to move stuff around more effectively. And we'll grab the furniture and the expert miner. And we'll go ahead and head out As because there's a merchant man on the way back. The Spanish people threaten the peace of this world, the mixed tech say. We must put them in their place before something worse happens. Are you with us, Dylan? 
Washington. I don't know. I mean, if you're going to declare war on them, maybe. So we could do this. This will cause the mixed tech at least to attack the Spanish, which will slow them down. And they are the closest colony to us. So they're our biggest potential threat that's not a native. And the Spanish are doing like the worst out of all of us, which is usually what they do. Applying pressure to the Spanish will be good. The odds of them actually attacking us are pretty small as well. So we can basically sit back and then just declare peace later on pretty quick. Unless we want to get aggressive. Sure. Let's do that. Alrighty. So I know he has like four cities, I think. A lot of them are inland cities as well. I think I'm actually going to commit to this fight a little bit. I'm going to send my native mercenary and my ranger together down south. They work together really effectively in dense terrain. And I should be able to use that to harass the crap out of the Spanish. Alright, with the ranch built, I think I'm going to go ahead and road it up. So I can move to defend it faster and more easily. From the Karib village that is sitting literally right there. Literally, it is right next to it pretty much. I don't want to lose that improvement if I can help it. We have a capable merchantman. Can you make out anything with Boat Swain? The captain asks excitedly. Is it a damned privateer or one of our customs cutters? The company would resent it very much if I lost this wonderful new ship to the pirates on our first voyage. I'm afraid I can't make anything out, sir. The cells are only partly above the horizon, the Boat Swain replies nervously. Then up the mast with you, Boson, all the way up to the top. We should be able to see the hole from up there. Aye, aye sir. The boat Swain answers with a tug on his cap, thinking to himself, One oh and ten minutes anyway. This ship can't escape. We're too heavily loaded. The hell? Why is there a high crime in Mother of Pearl? What is going on here? Ah, uh, wars with other Europeans. Gotcha. Alright, there's an unhappiness penalty whenever you go to war with other people. So now Mother of Pearl is having issues with gold being stolen. It's not that bad. Like, getting gold stolen is not a huge deal. But I won't be able to rectify their happiness for a very long time, actually. So, this sucks. Looks like we have found the Swedish lands. They're next to the Huron. I have received another free colonist that I'd like to get trained up as something important. I'm kind of thinking of sending them to become an expert prospector. The thing is that to get there, you might be going through a mountain range that does not have a passage. But we will find out. We've got our first load of gems slash pearls, and that's going to give us 2,688 gold. We're not actually getting taxed yet, which is amazing. That probably means that our king doesn't think we're doing too hot. Let's take the miner, and then let's go ahead and grab some more people right now. I don't want the native trader, or do I? Mm, not really. I want to get... I'm going to need people to do... I need carpenters, dude. That's what I need the most. Because I've got what I need to set all locations. I've got defenders. So I just need carpenters. So let's grab a carpenter. That's going to leave us with, leave us with not enough money for another one. And then let's grab a lumberjack. We'll pick y'all up and head on back. Head on back where exactly though? I need to pick one of these. Probably pearly gates. And then we'll pick up the food. Head down to Pearl Harbor. And then equip our settlers. Another load of gold. Let's offload it. Got a bunch of money. Now what do we really want to bring back? Well, the guy can only bring back goods and I don't want to put goods on the guy because the guy can't enter pearly gates. So let's not worry about that one too much. We might want to buy not another ship, but a carpenter. Let's buy a carpenter. Let's buy a lumberjack. I actually want to buy another ship. Kind of a cheap ship. Or, let's buy Hardy Pioneer. I saw him, it was a little bit cheaper, I think. Yeah, 3,600, I'll take that. And now let's buy a ship. Let's go with a Merchantman, put y'all on the boat. We don't need much of anything else. That'll be good, and send them on their way to what location? Let's go with our old Harper. Yeah, that'll do. All right, Village Hall is done in Mother O Pearl. So now we need a medical office instantaneously. The, the Morisca are upset about us opening our borders with the Portuguese. No thanks, I'm not gonna do that. What I will do though is I'll try to keep good relations with the other Europeans that aren't Spain by opening my borders with them. Hopefully that'll bring our peoples together. 
France, I probably might attack one day. They're the second closest, although Russia's pretty close by too. Kinda doubt Russia is gonna want to, yeah, they don't want to open borders. A little bit isolationist. Alright, this free colonist has a direct path through the mountain range. I'm gonna send him to become an expert prospector. There's a pretty good chance I will make, will make pretty good use of him by the time he can get to the colonies. Ah, oh, we have found the Dutch far, far, far in the north. I wonder how the climate is working on this map exactly. This is a gigantic map, dude. Absolutely enormous. Alright, we have an evangelist arriving in Pearl Harbor. The missionaries are actually better preachers at the chapel building level. So I'll be using him instead of the firebrand for now. Yep, you're getting replaced, Mr. Preacher, by a better man. Oh, well, that puts us over on our goods. Let's actually limit that. Let's make a pioneer. And then let's make a... Well, that fixed the problem. Having a dude equipped as a pioneer is totally fine, but we're going to use all of them. We only need 45 for settlers, but we're going to have a bunch of food coming from the pearly gates. Bunch of food. So yeah, I'd rather you just sort of chill out there, Pioneer. Thank you very much. Hello there, Peter's Choice of Aunt. The Dutch are just better in every way because their prices are more consistent. They've probably been balanced out by the mod though a little bit. No, oh, there's a shipwreck on a reef. Probably don't want to grab that. <laughs> like this, how have the AI not found this shipwreck up here? with their ship by now, like, come on, bro. You have just one city, yeah. Huh. Maybe they're just bad. Maybe they're just bad. Treasure got double attacked by a wolf and a lynx, so we lost that treasure. It's too bad. And it's getting crowded. This continent once seemed so infinitely large to you. Now you've discovered seven other European powers that also settled in the New World. Do you want to maintain good trade relations with them? Trade with them and thereby fill our coffers? Or do you want to plunder their colonies and annex them to your colonial empire? In any case, you should re-examine your military strength and, if necessary, ask the king for more troops. You never know what those other powers might be up to. Ah, our first tax increase up to 2%. We could destroy all horses in Europe and not be able to buy horses and not get that 2% tax raise, but no, that is that would be silly. 100% silly. Ooh, there's gems in this meteor crater. That's pretty cool. Hmm, this might be a path through, but I kind of doubt it. We'll follow this little channel way up north up here and see if we can find our way to the west. Alright, Carrick and Brigantine will be going on down to Pearl Harbor. Road is built. Next up, I think I want to get what exactly? I don't need anything really improved on the mainland colonies at the moment, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move northeast. These guys, let me double check how far the Carib can move. They would have to go through my colonial militia who is dug in to get to my hardy pioneer, so we should be okay there. We would want to build a farm right there so that we can increase the food production. Pearly Gates is gonna be all about food, horses, and then pearls, that's about it. <laughs> I've got another Mestizo here. He can get some training, but what exactly will that be? We could actually train a Seasoned Scout up there, but that doesn't make sense at this point in the game. An expert Tobacco Planter may not be a terrible idea. I think we have... Oh, we have pretty bad access to tobacco, actually. Yeah, very bad access to tobacco in the area. We're better off with, like, sugarcane planting. I really doubt that anybody would train sugar planting along the way, though. Yeah, oh wait, no. There's one right there, Emitaka. Where do you think you're going, though? I think you can go up north through the blackness. Well, you can't. I'm telling you now, you can do it. So let's have you go that direction. There you go. I'd like to access these gems one day. I can't get it by taking Conception de la Vega. The closest place that I could found a colony would have to be, like, right here in order to access the gems, but that'd be very unhealthy. In order to access the gems, I'd have to found in mixed tech land in order to get access to those. So we might just burn Conception down, or ideally we'll capture it, steal all the population out of it, and then burn it down. Because I do not like where it's placed. Our native trader has arrived, so we're going to establish our first trading post with a 90% success rate. It will, it will gradually generate treasures based on the population. 
and we pulled it off good you can fail <laughs> it's unlikely but it happens whoa there's two sets of gold over here there's one right here and there's one right here there tends to be pretty good precious metals in these ice lands sadly we'll never get to make use of these they are ridiculously far away from our actual settlements and there's only a light artillery in Concepcion de la Vega right now. He does have 35% settlement defense and 20% strength. We could maybe take him down. This might be it. This might be the way through after all. Let's pick up that shipwreck for the immigrant first. The indentured servant, I mean. Let's go ahead. Let's start the farm work right there. And... uh. I'd like to specifically protect that dude if possible. So let's send the native merc out. We'll still be good on everything else in here. So we should be a-okay. God, I have so many freaking colonists just standing around everywhere. Like, literally. I have two failed traders, a dissolution missionary, firebrand preacher, a vintager, carpenter, fisherman, great picker, miner, Friggin' native slave, indentured servant, free colonist hidden as a pioneer, and another free colonist. I need to settle a ridiculous amount of land right now. <laughs> but let's swap the lumberjack out, and let's put in the carpenter. Everyone else just pretty much has to stand around. There's not much else I can do. I could have them work in pearly gates a little bit, but even here there's not much I could actually do with them. Most of the actual work that can be done is being done. All else that we could have them do is produce food, so there's not much else. We are being very, very bottlenecked by our inability to actually settle the colonies fast enough to meet our immigration rate. Alright, I'm gonna have the brig start shipping back some more gems, grapes, and all that jazz. Go back to Mother of Pearl, then head back to Europe. The Carrick, I'm gonna have him stay where he is. And then pretty soon we'll be bringing food down from early gates so that we can start settling some more land. We need to make like three colonies or something stupid. We've got plenty of gold on hand. Let's go ahead, let's recruit an expert fisherman. And then I think we'll just float the remainder of the gold. I'm gonna need to equip some people as soldiers. You're gonna be a soldier. Congratulations. That is, that's what I'm gonna spend my gold on. We need troops. Because we are 100% not going to pay for any more native land pretty sure and we lost a treasure to an independent black bear okay this mestizo actually accidentally got some experience points from going to a goodie hut so now he has ranger one and two promotions he might make a good soldier then instead let's send him to become a soldier ideally although he will not take the correct path away let us double check his pathing no you're correct actually good boy all right the ship has arrived we need to grab a boatload of food we need to settle as many colonies as we can possibly settle i've got i'd say two additional defenders at most from pearl harbor available that would be stretching our lines pretty thin but that will be a temporary thing the carib are still only minus two so we're all right we're temporarily all right if we start taking their land, though, we will, of course, probably piss them off completely. But whatever. We need to expand. We need to place down new colonies. I need some colonies that aren't complete garbage in terms of food. Well, that's going to be hard with all this friggin' marsh everywhere. I'm thinking I might want to reconsider the placement of my cities a little bit here. Like, this one in the middle is not very good. So let's get rid of you, and let's put you over by one to the east. Maybe even closer, actually. I want them as tight as they can get. But if I don't put that city there, we'll never be able to reach the iron ore. No, uh, we're fine, rat. Screw it. There, there. Settle here. Then I want to settle as close as we can towards the west. This is not considered a cross water because this is a lake. Well, this is a large river right here. And it is connected by land. So that does actually fall under the proximity of the settlement right here. So I can't even settle here. I would have to settle like on turkeys. I can't even settle, I could settle actually this location right here. That gives me the blueberries eventually, fish, cows, 
and then one, two, three, closest spot I could settle would actually be to still get the cotton, would be on the turkeys, and then one, two, three, all other land here will be taken up. Closest I could get would be one, two, three, this area, maybe right here. And then I could get the crabs eventually, bison eventually, turkey eventually, deer eventually, and turkeys eventually. Main issue is, well this is also a river ford too, so that's good. Control of the river ford. But these tiles themselves aren't that impressive overall. But that's fine. That makes use of almost all of this land right here. And then I want to build something down here. So one, two, three, closest I could build one, two, three is actually one of these places. This is all unhealthy terrain, so I'd rather found it here if I found it anywhere. Alright, so it's one settle, two settle, three settles. I think that's a pretty good set of options. We're just gonna need more soldiers, man. A lot more soldiers. So we want to settle three times, but I think, actually, yeah, we do have enough to equip three sets of settlers. Yes, we do. Good deal. So we need to bring down 67 times 3 food, so 201. We'll bring all that down. I'll also bring the lumberjack maybe? Let's actually get the lumberjack working on the valuable wood. So he's making 6.78. What did the slave make? The slave made 6.78. Yeah, hm. just as good. I kind of think I want to drop a carpenter off here. Maybe pull out the coal miner. So you get out. Carpenter goes in. That means that all the lumber is going to start getting used that we have at the moment. I could use the lumberjack here. I think that's a reasonable choice to make. So we'll use the lumberjack in pearly gates. Increase our lumber income. We can distribute the lumber if necessary. The miner needs to go somewhere else. And the coal miner also needs to go somewhere else. This is not the place for them. And there's nothing else that they can really do here. They can do a little bit of ranching, but we don't have enough horses on hand to make that really, really valuable. Which means that we need to move horses up here. Hey, hey, our borders have expanded even more in Pearly Gates, and now we control all this land. Unfortunately, I'm growing a farm somewhere that I'm probably not going to actually farm now. I'm going to move you up to there instead to produce a boatload of food. So this location could be used for something else, even tobacco or more horse production, but of course we need small ships to go in and out of here. We might use this for food either way, or we could use it for hemp actually. Hemp would not be a bad choice. Let's actually stop. Stop working on the farm. How are our relations with the Carib? Minus two still, okay. We might be alright to work on the farm, but I think there's a good chance that we won't be able to truly. We should be fine as long as they have enough guards. Alright, we got more people unloaded here. We got one Master Carpenter already at work. Food supplies are already pretty stretched thin. I'm not sure there's much I can do about the food supplies until the colony's borders expand. Oh, there's timber here actually. I didn't notice that. So I should go ahead and build an actual uh, lumberjack lodge right there. Most of these other people I want to just have them stand around and chill out until our three or so colonies that we want to get started are ready to go. Many native nations. You already have 20 different tribes on your map. How many more do you think there could be? If you imagine that this vast land was essentially uninhabited, your scouts have proved you wrong. What will contact with these different cultures bring? War? Peace? Trade? Will the church rid them of their superstitions and make them good Christians with the Bible in hand? Or will you have to use your sword? There's still a lot of work ahead of you, that much is certain. I really like this background image of the... This is probably the old map actually right here. It's very, very nice. So with the village all done in Pearl Harbor, next we probably want to go for... Yeah, we need to increase our culture faster than ever. So we get plus two culture from the village market or plus two culture from the tavern and we could have someone work at the tavern. But the issue with that is lack of food. So let's get the culture rolling faster with the village market first, and then we'll go from there. Where did we get this converted native from? My slave? Yeah, slave. So you're only going to produce 4.52 wood now. That's not good enough for me. Let's put 
the other native slave to work, and we'll have you do lumber instead. Because I need to make as much valuable wood, exotic wood, whatever it's called, as I'm using for my furniture production. Okay, we got 5,533 gold, and we need soldiers. Grab me another soldier, please, and thank you. I'm going to keep spending money on more troops, because we're going to need them very shortly. We do really need, like, artilleries to get a very good odd of actually attacking a settlement, though. Artilleries are what are really made for taking and defending settlements.